Let's start with what we know. We opened chapter 4 with the triangle sum theorem, and that told us that in this case, any triangle having three angles, interior angles, that is, they sum up to 180 degrees. So now, well, let's see if I can take that and extend that to another figure. Let's take this figure. It's a quadrilateral, but I could draw a diagonal here and split it into two triangles. Each of these triangles, the orange and the yellow, have well, 180 degrees of interior angle measurement. Now, um, when I'm looking at the quadrilateral, I'm going to add combined angles 1 and 6, and that would be this angle over here at this vertex, angle addition postulate. Over here at this vertex, this angle is made up of these two. So I could sum all six of these angles, and I would find the total of the interior angle measurement for this quadrilateral. And that's going to be two triangles, or 360. Let's extend that to three sides. Yes, you imagined. I can draw and split this into one, two, three triangles. Three triangles, three 180s, are 540. Let's go to six sides. Six sides, four triangles. You're getting, you, I think you're getting the hang of it. Now I want to caution you. With these diagonals, don't draw all the diagonals. Remember, the vertices must be on, well, on the perimeter. For example, if I drew this diagonal as well to create more triangles, I would be, I'd be messing it up because I'd have, I'd be making angles on the inside, on the interior. So, visualizing, make sure all the triangles, all the angles are on the outside or the perimeter of this figure. So now let's try one more seven-sided polygon and that splits into five triangles. So now I've got, I'm starting to see a pattern. Three sides, one triangle, four sides, etc. Every time I add a side, I add a triangle. In every case, if I have well, let's suppose I extend that n sides. I'm going to have n minus 2 triangles. Each triangle, 180 degrees of interior angle measurement. So that means that my triangle, well, polygon interior angle theorem says that for this convex polygon, oh, we forgot to mention that. Remember, they must be convex, convex, not concave. This would be concave. Caved in doesn't work. So for a convex polygon, it's going to be n minus 2, that's the number of triangles, times 180. In the old textbook, we wrote it this way, where S sub i stood for the sum of the interior angle measures. Well, if the sum of the interior angles obeys this formula, let's find these four right here. Remember, nonagon is nine sides. The rest of them are pretty obvious. And we'll just do the substitution, the subtraction, and the multiplication. That's it. Well, let's take this formula where S sub i is the sum of the interior angle measurement, work backwards to find n, knowing the measure of the angles. 360, you know that's a quadrilateral, but let's look at it. Let's do the exercise anyway. Over here. I've done the substitution, 360 and 720 respectively. Divide both sides of the equation by 180. So now I've got a value for n minus 2, and of course I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and then I can classify. Now when you get to this line, n minus 2 equals 2, so that's telling me I've got two triangles n minus 2 is 4, and there's our four triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four triangles means six sides. Now let's take this formula and try some bigger numbers for the sum of the interior angle measures. There we go. There's our substitution, dividing both sides of the equation by 180. And remember, now add 2. And we're done. Here we have a pentagon 
with one unknown angle. So let's find the sum of the interior angles. You know that's 540, we've done this before. We'll set up this exercise right here, add up all the angles, set them equal to our 540, and in this case, we'll just subtract the 423, and we're done. A similar exercise, this time I've got six sides. I'm still going to use this formula, using my number of sides equals six, a hexagon. By now we memorize that 720 of interior angle measurement. Remember adding them up, I've got a 90 over here. Let's just write all this down, add them all up, and set them equal to 720. Here we go. 570, take that away from both sides, and we are at 150. So X, 150 degrees right there. Now I have a quadrilateral, and I have four unknown angles, but they're all related by a factor of X. Add them all up, set them equal to 360. Solve for X, it's 36 degrees. Remember though, that's X, or the small angle here. Your smallest angle is 36. Your largest angle is four times as big, or four X's. Four 36's are 144, the answer is B. Let's start by drawing the pentagon PQRST. I've got a right angle here at P. Next to it, I've got a right angle at Q. So I guess Q has to go this way. I'm just going to move it in a little bit. Looks like this so far. Now, PQR. R is going to be along this ray somewhere. Then S. I'm going to move this over like this. And bit more like that. Our S and T would be this intersection. So there you go. Pentagon with the three required right angles. And I'm trying to make those two look that R and T look like they are congruent. Because they are. Here's your figure. Right there. Now, I know that the, tri uh, the sum of the interior angles of any polygon right there. And we've known this, you've seen this many times for a pentagon 540. So now, let's look over here and solve part C of this. How much is the measure of each of these angles, R and T? Well, that's pretty straightforward. I know that all these angles, the 270 comes from the 390 degree angles. Subtract that from both sides. These two angles must add up to 270, and they're congruent, so easy. Just a little bit of division. So there you go, three 90s and a pair of 135s.